Hello and welcome back to SciTai Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a POV light show with using an ATtiny 85 and an LM317. This kind of circuit will have random flashing LEDs and you'll be able to control the speed of the motor, which will then make the LEDs even more random. Let's get started. <laughs> And these are the items that you're going to need to make for these two circuits. The items you're going to need is two perf boards. This first perf board will contain the voltage regulating circuit, which is going to be an LM317 voltage regulator, a 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitor, a 680 ohm resistor, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 10k ohm potentiometer, along with a washer, nut, and knob. You're also going to need a 9 volt battery connector, a 5 volt DC motor, which has a CD connector bit, which then will connect to the CD, which then you can be able to control the motor to control the speed of the CD spinning, and on top of the CD will contain the second circuit. Which will go onto this perf board which will then contain an 8-pin IC socket holder, an ATtiny85 microcontroller, and three LEDs, one blue, one red, and one green. You're also going to need a 3-volt button cell battery holder, which will then power this ATtiny85 microcontroller, and this ATtiny85 is programmed to make these three LEDs flash in a random order, and when they flash in a random order, placed on top of the CD, and when the CD spins, the LEDs will flash in a very unique pattern, and when the CD is controlled by using this potentiometer from the voltage regulating circuit, you'll be able to control the speed by making it spin fast, which will make the patterns look different. And when you make the CD spin slow, it'll make the patterns look different from the fast. And then by changing the speed, it'll make the LEDs flash in a very unique, beautiful pattern. And to program the ATtiny85 microcontroller to make the three LEDs flash in a random order, I have the code for this program in the link in the description below. Now, let's go ahead and assemble this circuit, and let's get started. First, we're going to start with making the voltage regulator circuit. And according to the schematic, this is what the voltage regulator circuit looks like. We need to assemble the components onto the perf board to form this kind of circuit. Let's get started. First, I'm going to take the LM317 and put it into the perf board, just like this. and then solder it into place. Next, I'm going to connect one pin of the 680 ohm resistor to the voltage output pin, which is the center pin. And the other pin of the resistor is not connected to anything. There we go, bend over one lead of the resistor to the voltage output, and then solder both of them into place. There we go, this pin is not connected to anything. And this pin here is connected to the voltage output. Solder bridge it to the voltage output, just like this. And there we go, solder bridged just like this. Next, cut off the excess. There we go, and it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take the 9 volt battery connector and connect it to one side of the perf board, just like this. Solder it into place. Next, I'm going to take the 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitor and connect it to the two connections of the 9 volt battery connector. Just like this, bend over the leads and then solder bridge it to the battery connector. There we go, solder bridge just like that and cut off the excess. Next, I'm going to take the 10k ohm potentiometer and put it into the perf board, just like this. Next, I'm going to solder it into place, and the center pin of the potentiometer is going to be soldered to the 680 ohm resistor. There we go, solder bridge just like that. Next, I'm going to bend over the adjust pin voltage regulator, and bend it over to the opposite end of the resistor, the part where it's connected to the center pin of the potentiometer. Bend it over just like this. And then solder bridge it together. Next, I'm going to take the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and place it into the perf board, just like this. And there we go, solder it into place where I take the negative of the electrolytic capacitor and solder it to the common ground, which is connected to the ceramic capacitor and to the negative of the 9 volt battery connector. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, I'm 
Next, I'm going to bend the positive lead from the electrolytic capacitor, bend it over just like this, solder it into place, and then continue bending it over into sort of a hook shape. Use my pliers, bend it over, and take the adjust pin voltage regulator and bend it over and connect it to the positive of the electrolytic capacitor. And there we go, solder bridge together, just like that. And there we go, the adjust pin voltage regulator is connected to the positive pin from the electrolytic capacitor, and it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take a negative wire and solder it to one of the pins of the potentiometer. I choose this pin, and I want to connect it to the common ground. And there we go, the potentiometer is now connected to the common ground. Next, I'm going to take the positive wire and solder it to the voltage input of the voltage regulator. And I want to take the voltage input and bridge it over to the positive connection of the night volt battery connector. Just like this. There we go, solder to it just like that. And then solder to the 9 volt battery connector's positive. Solder bridge it to the voltage input, and there. And there we go, the voltage input is now connected to the 9 volt battery connector. Next, I'm going to take the 5 volt DC motor and connect the positive and negative wire from the DC motor and connect it to the positive and negative of the electrolytic capacitor, which will be the output of the circuit. Put the wires in just like this. Hold it into place. Bend over the leads just like this. Solder 10 the wires. There we go. And then solder it into place. There we go. And it should look just like this. And there you have it, the circuit is now complete. Now let's go ahead and test it out by connecting the 9 volt battery to it. And as you can see, it works. But as you can see, the potentiometer is turned down all the way to the maximum, but the circuit still puts out 1.2 volts. That shows me that this DC motor is very sensitive to low voltage, which means I'm gonna to need to add a switch to the circuit to be able to turn it on and off. And now it's time to make the ET tiny circuit. First, I'm gonna take the button cell battery holder and place it onto the perf board, just like this. Solder it into place. Take the push button lock switch right next to the positive of the button cell battery and solder it into place. Next, I'm going to take this bridge wire and solder it to one of the pins of the push button lock switch and then solder the bridge wire to the positive of the button cell battery holder. And there we go, solder it into place just like that. Next, I'm going to take the 8 pin IC socket holder and place it onto the perf board where pin 8 is right next to the push button lock switch. Solder bridge pin 8 to the push button lock switch, just like this. And there we go, pin 8 is now connected to the switch. And now, solder the rest of the pins into place. There we go, should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take this negative wire and solder bridge it to the negative terminal of the button cell battery and to pin 4 of the IC socket holder. And there we go, solder to the negative terminal. And now, solder to the pin 4. And there, it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to place the circuit on top of the CD, and I want to connect these three colored LEDs, and I want to bridge it over to pin 5, 6, and 7. Next, I'm going to solder these four wires to the circuit and connect the LEDs to the circuit. First, I'm going to start with a negative wire and solder it to pin 4. And there we go, solder bridge to pin 4. Next, I'm going to take these colored wires and connect pin 5, 6, and 7. And there we go, 5, 6, and 7 are ready to be soldered. Bend over the wires so I can solder bridge easier. Solder it into place, and then solder bridge it to pin 5, 6, and 7. Just like this. Next, I'm going to place the circuit onto the CD, just like this, and hot glue it into place. There we go, place it just like that. Next, I'm going to take this negative wire that's connected to pin 4 and place it on this side so that way I can ground all three of the LEDs cathodes to pin 4. Next, I'm going to take the LEDs and bend the leads just like this. Next, I'm going to hot glue the LEDs into place. There we go, just like that. And now I'm going to go and connect all the cathodes together by bending all of the leads to touch each other. 
just like this. Solder all three of the cathodes together. There we go, just like that. Next, I'm going to take the negative wire from pin 4 and ground all three of the cathodes of the LEDs. And there we go, the cathode of the LEDs are now connected to pin 4. Next, I'm going to solder 10 the anodes of the LEDs. There we go, just like that. Next, I'm going to take these wires that are connected to pin 5, 6, and 7 and solder to each of the LEDs. There we go, just like this. And there, the LEDs are now connected to the circuit. Next, I'm going to take some hot glue and glue down the wires and glue down the exposed leads so that way everything is insulated. Next, I'm going to take the ET Tiny and place it into the IC socket holder. Place it in just like this. Next, I'm going to take the 3 volt button cell battery and place it into the 3 volt button cell battery holder. And there, the circuit is now complete. And now it's time to test the circuit. And there, the circuit works. And as you can see, the LEDs are now flashing in a random order. And by the way, the code is in the link in the description below to be able to program your AT Tiny to do this. Now an interesting thing I've noticed is that the CD is off balanced. So what I need to do is put some weights and I'm going to take these nuts and glue them to the CD. And by doing that, we'll allow the CD to be more balanced when it spins. So that way it doesn't wobble or vibrate when you're turning on this DC motor. So I'm going to place one nut right here, just like this. Because when I balance it, I notice that if I put my hand right here and then try to balance it, it'll balance just like that. And there, that seems to be more balanced. So I'm going to go and put some hot glue right here and glue down this nut, just like this. Test it out. Oh, that looks a little bit more balanced. Good. Now I'm going to do a final test by trying to balance the CD on top of the screwdriver. And as you can see, it's still not quite balanced. So I'm going to have to tinker with this for a little while. And there we go. One hour later of me trying to balance out the CD, I came up with this. And as you can see, I placed different types of screws and nuts on here to be able to balance it. Not only that it makes the CD more balanced, it also gives it more of an artistic look to it. But as you can see, it is more balanced. I have right here this piece of wood which I've turned into a Lichtenberg fractal art, and this dot right here is the center of the wood. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drill bit right here and drill a sinkhole deep enough to allow me to put the DC motor inside of. Okay, so now I have my drill ready, and I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole. There we go, perfect. Next, I'm going to put a small amount of hot glue on the DC motor, so that way I can glue it into place. There we go, just like that. And there, it is now ready. Next, I'm going to take some of this foam and put it on the back of this piece of wood. The reason for doing this is because I want to keep this piece of wood stabilized when this DC motor is spinning the CD, because I've noticed it vibrates too much and it's also very noisy. Doing this will reduce the noise and cause it to stabilize. Next, let's go ahead and take the CD and put it on top. And there we go, should look just like this. Next, I'm going to go and take the voltage regulator circuit and glue it into place. Take some hot glue, put a generous amount, place it right here on the corner, and there, glued into place. Next, I'm going to take the 9 volt battery clip and glue it into place. There we go, just like that. Next, what I'm going to do is cut the positive wire from the 9 volt battery clip. Next, I'm going to go and remove the insulation. There we go, just like that. Solder tin it. And now solder it to the slide switch. There we go, just like that. Perfect, now glued into place. And there, it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take the knob that connects to the potentiometer and put it into place. And there you have it, 
Your project is now complete. Now let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AT Tiny circuit. And there we go, the LEDs are now flashing in a random order. And now turn on the voltage regulator circuit. And there, the CD is now spinning. And as you can see, the LEDs are flashing in a random order and it's creating some very unique patterns. This is very mesmerizing, especially in person. Unfortunately, looking through the camera with the shutter speed and refresh rate is actually causing the LEDs to flash in a different order than what you would see in person. In person, this is a lot better. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own POV light show with using an ATtiny85 microcontroller and an LM317 voltage regulator and also a few other simple components. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTiTech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTiTech videos. Till the next tech. Goodbye.